Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel many times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the last couple of years. They are still a relatively new addition to the Swedish beer scene, but they have become very, very well respected. When it comes to this brewery, I would say that they are best known for their different kinds of New England hazy, whatever you want to call them, IPAs, but also for their big, fruity, juicy, modern, Nordic, whatever we're going to call them, sour beers. So the one that we're going to have a look at today is one of three beers that they released this month. It is supposed to be very, very nice, and it is a style that I know these guys can do very, very well. So needless to say, I'm very, very curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us. So hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review. And as always, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head up toward the Gothenburg area once again, Jutebori, as you would say in Swedish, the Swedish craft beer capital up there on the west coast. Got to get that Gothenburg catchphrase in when we're reviewing Gothenburg beers because it is just channel tradition these days. And for this review then, we are going to return to the wonderful Duck Pond Brewing. So this particular beer is called Flugelbinder. It comes in at 4.5% ABV and this one is another Goza, but this time it has black currants, blueberries, cherries, strawberries, raspberries and a little bit of vanilla added into the mix. So uh, yeah, this beer was released as part of the Lokalt Osmoskalit assortment through Systembolag here in Sweden for September of 2022. Um, it was one of three, like I said, we already reviewed the Pink Sombrero, now we have the Flugelbinder and the other one I forget the name of, but you will see that one reviewed in a couple of videos time. But I always enjoy these kind of modern juicy sour beers from Duck Pond Brewing, and if you're interested in the New England hazies, or those kind of modern sour beers, Duck Pond Brewing is one of the Swedish breweries that I highly, highly recommend you check out. But yeah, let's crack on with this one then and see what it has in store for us. So, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Duck Pond Brewing before, and you will no doubt see me add more to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support you give is massively, massively appreciated. And you can, of course, check out the playlist of beer on the channel. You will find this one in the Swedish beer playlist. So uh, yeah, let's crack on then and have a little look at my brewery notes and tell you a wee bit about Duck Pond Brewing. So Duck Pond Brewing was originally known as Microphone Brigariat or the Microphone Brewery. And this is the brainchild of Nikola Sarsevich, who is a singer and songwriter for the band Neil and Colin, who have been making music since 1993. So the band was originally based in Örebro, out to the west of Stockholm, but then they took a break, and at this point, Nikola moved over to Gothenburg, Utebori. But in 2013, he began home brewing with his friend Christian Silva while he was studying international marketing in Huvda. So the two were brewing in just very small 20 litre batches at this time, and then a little bit later on, Nikola went down to Berlin for a two week brewing course. But after this, the two started the company officially and it was based for a while in Nicola's house and at this point they were brewing 200 litre batches. So they got, you know, they were doing quite well and their beers were getting a good reputation but they decided in the summer of 2019 to change their name because they felt that Microphone Vigariat was quite difficult for foreign people to spell so they decided to go with something that was a little bit more English friendly so they could start exporting their beers. So um, yeah, Duck Pond Brewing was where they landed and over the last few years they've been working to uh, up their output and also to grow their kind of sales both domestically and internationally. Uh, but that year in 2019 they produced around 70,000 litres and these guys are also one of the co-owners of the Wizard Brewing brand along with Morian Dalgans who are another very good sour beer brewery in the Gothenburg area. But originally these guys were producing most of their beer at Popelsbrugge in Nyonsered and also Odd Island Brewing who if I remember correctly are in uh, Mjöndal 
to the south of Gothenburg, but these days Duck Pond Brewing have their own premises in Kungsten, and they've recently hired Magnus Lorraine as their new brewer. They do brew a number of their beers still at Odd Island Brewing. If I remember correctly, what Duck Pond actually do is brew the beer at, at uh, Odd Island, and then they take the wort up to their own place in Kungsten, and that's where they do all the magic when it comes to the sour beers. So hopefully they can get their own brew kit at some point. That would actually be uh, really cool for them. But like I say, they are very, very well respected when it comes to New England hazy IPAs and also their big fruity juicy sour beers. And uh, as of September 2022, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced about 60 different beers under the Duck Pond name and there were about 20 or so beers were previously released under the name Microphone at the uh, So yeah, it would be nice to see one or two of the, or a couple of the however many, whatever, it'd be nice to see some of the Microphone Vigariot beers uh, make a comeback under the Duck Pond name. That would be really nice. So, um, yeah, that is everything I can really tell you about Duck Pond Brewing for the moment. Again, if you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. You can check out some of my older reviews. You can search Microphone Vigariot in the uh, channel as well, and you'll find those. But you can check out the untapped list to see all the different beers that Duck Pond have done as well. So uh, yeah, let's crack on with this one then and have a look at it. So like I said to you earlier, this one is a 4.5% Goza. Remember the style Goza originates from uh, Germany. I forget the name of the town now, but um, Rita Gutz Goza is one of the ones that is brewed to the original recipe. It's not a, that old a brewery, but yeah, they do use an original recipe. But what they used to do with Goza, the thing that d distinguishes a Goza is the fact that it contains a little bit of salt. And they used to brew these beers and let them openly ferment in cellars. And, you know, they put them in the bottles. You would have this big layer of foam sitting on top of these bottles where the beer was fermenting. And that was a German Goza. So uh, yeah, remember this one comes in at 4.5% ABV. It contains black currants, blackberries, cherries, strawberries, raspberries, and vanilla. And uh, yeah, the name Flugelbinder, it um, apparently, uh, I, I think, okay, it says when I put in this word, because I was thinking like uh, bird binder or bird connector or something like that, you know, I was trying to think in German. Apparently this word, um, originates in the film Cocktail, the Tom Cruise one, which is one of his first films, if I remember rightly, um, where he's a bartender. But yeah, Pink Sombrero. Uh, apparently this word is mentioned in a scene when they're sitting next to the water and he talks about uh, this guy who goes and makes the little um, cocktail sombrero things and he's actually holding a pink one in the scene. So I think that's where the name Pink Sombrero comes from. So when we do the third beer out of these three gozes that they've released, um, then we'll have a look, because maybe that's also a reference to the film Cocktail. So yeah, Flugelbinder, apparently it was a word that was um, kind of invented by the film, but it refers, I think it refers to actual engineering terms, well, an artel or something like that, if I remember correctly. But yeah, anyway, so th 33 um, centiliter can, this one, 330 milliliters. Um, yeah, I think I paid about 40 Swedish kroner for this, so that's about four euros £3.75 sterling, $4.25 American, something like that. But yeah, let's get this guy out into the glass and we'll get on with the tasting. I'm very curious about this, but I always enjoy the Duck Pond Sours. So let's crack open and have a taste. I'm just going to say straight away, that looks pretty fucking awesome. So there you are. I think the head on this is going to disappear quite quickly. So as you can see, the head on this one poured maybe about a half finger. It did pour to be about a half finger, uh, but that has just faded away to be pretty much nothing. And there's a little bit of that nice kind of ring around the edge of the glass. I think it's fair to say it's that kind of pink purple tinted color. Um, I never let you see the thing there. You can see Flugelbinder right on the can, and you can also see the Duck Pond brewing symbol on the back there. But um, yeah, this should be quite nice. And as you can see, it looks lovely. So I would describe this beer as being a lovely kind of maroon colour. It reminds me of the heart of Midlothian football shirt. Lovely kind of maroon note this one. Although I know there's a few Hibs fans watch the channel and they got a little bit upset when I didn't mention Hibs. But uh, there you go. Uh, so yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass. Otherwise, not too much in the way of visible carbonation with this one. But like I say, lovely sort of maroon uh, colour this one. 
So, um, yeah, remember, the colour of these beers depends on, one, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised, thus you get a darker colour of beer. Any uh, barrel aging that you do or any adjuncts that you put in will play a role in determining the colour too. And the adjuncts, of course, do play a big role in, uh, in this one. So, uh, yeah, I think that's that. So, let's have a little look at the aroma of this one then. I don't think we really need to say anything else about the appearance of this one, other than the fact you can see that it's pretty damn hazy, but that will be down to the oat and the wheat content in this one. So, yeah, oats and wheat are the things that really give you a lot of your haze. The yeast can play a role too. But let's have a closer look at the aroma and just see what we get from this one. Yeah. That's very nice. I'm going to say straight away, it's got this beautiful aroma that you always expect from uh, from Duck Pond. Now, what I've often said about these kind of sour beers is that very often they, um, they're very simple, they're very straightforward in terms of their flavour profiles, but if they're done right, they're just beautiful, beautiful beers. And that's what you get out of this one straight away. I mean, the aroma isn't really anything madly surprising, but it's just a lovely, lovely smelling beer. Um, yeah, I like this one. Yeah, aroma-wise, it's, it is very, very good. So, uh, where do we start with this one then? In terms of the... Uh, you know, just as a simple overview, it's big and juicy and fruity. You've got all these lovely kind of berry notes coming out of it. Uh, but then behind it, you've got that petit filou yogurt type thing. It's got that lovely big kind of smoothie modern sour vibe to it. I really like this actually. Um, yeah, I think this is uh, this is really really good. So, um, yeah, lovely, lovely smelling beer. I have to say, um. Where do we begin? Where do we begin? Uh, backbone of the beer then. Let's just look at this. You do get a tiny little hint of like a fresh white bread bread crust in there. There's lots of, uh, you, you do get a nice little bit of a kind of smooth white bread, but this beer is, the malt base is remarkably kind of creamy and sort of yogurty. Like I always say, these beers remind me of the Petit Filou yogurts, you know, that my mum used to put these munch bunch yogurts in my lunchbox when I was a wee boy. And this one really, really reminds me of that. So yeah, you've got a little bit of bread crust, you've got some nice white bread in there, that big yogurty, um, you've got that nice big sort of yogurty petit filou sort of thing with this one. It's nice and big and creamy, of course. You can smell some of the salty sweetness in this too, actually. I really like how this, um, how the beer goes about its business in that sense. Yeah, a bit of bread crust, a bit of... Uh, yeah, a little bit of bread crust, lovely white bready notes. The kind of yogurty creaminess on top of that, you can smell the oats. There is a teeny little bit of the wheaty bitiness in the back of the nose, but yeah, big, big creamy oats. You can definitely get the vanilla in this. And I think the fact that they're using vanilla in this one is really, it really kind of amplifies that petit filou yogurt type character that I'm talking about. There is also a little hint of that, you know, butter candy, butterscotchy sort of thing. This is only a 4.5% goza. It's not like an imperial goza. So that's one of the other things um, to keep in mind with this one. Um, but yeah, the way that that goes together is nice. So yeah, a little bit of Werther's Original. As I say, the, 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 the vanilla is giving you that sort of candied thing to it. Pardon me as well. But yeah, lovely big kind of oaty creaminess to this one. Uh, the malty backbone of this is really nice. It's what we've had from Duck Pond before, but they really just have a very good balance when it comes to these beers. And like I say, you get a little bit of saltiness out of this. In terms of hops and things like that, this beer, it doesn't say on the can that it contains hops. And we've spoken about this on the channel before. Some of the more modern sort of smoothie Nordic sour breweries, they don't use hops in their beer. There is a debate about that. It can give the beer a little bit more complexity, but at the same time, it can take away from some of the sour aspects of the beer. Personally, I find that you often still get a little bit of a placebo uh, green component in some of these beers. So for me, I can smell, because of all the berries and stuff in it, I can smell a little bit of this sort of woody, brambly green component to the beer. There's a teeny little bit, you know, you do get some sort of grassiness out of it. 
and as I say, that sort of brambly uh, kind of note from the beer as well. Um, so yeah, the way that this goes together is really really nice in that um, in that regard. You do there's not really the, the green component to this beer, if we can call it the placebo green component, is very very smooth. But like I say, just a little touch of uh, of grassiness to it for me, and again, it, it goes together really well um, from that perspective. Um, on the yeah, on the fruity side of things, then I think we've covered everything we need to say about the green and the green component and the um about the green component and the the kind of malty side of things, the fruity side of this beer, I think is um, is really, really nice. Um, there's a whole host of stuff going on there. I'm forgetting what fruits are in this. Blackcurrants, blueberries, cherries, strawberries. Was there raspberries as well? Yeah. So this has got a bit of everything, this one. Trying to pick out these individual fruits is quite interesting. I mean, um, it actually smells very, very juicy. So, I mean, for me, out of all of these fruits... It's the blueberries and the raspberries that would normally give you the tartness. But I think having the, the straw, strawberries, whenever you put strawberries in some of these beers, they always give you that juicy note. And cherries and, uh, you know, black currants tend to, uh, to do that as well. So you've kind of got this really juicy backbone with the cherries, the strawberries. And the for me, actually, you can smell that strawberry is kind of the backbone, but you've got the cherry mixing in with that and the black currants, obviously, as well. But I would say that those three are kind of combining to mute the sort of potency of the raspberries and the, the blueberries to quite a significant extent. You do, in the top of the nose, you do get that little bit of sharpness out of the beer. But um, yeah, it is more just kind of juicy. You can smell all of them. You can smell all of them in there. But I think we'll get a little bit more out of it uh, when we actually taste the thing. So as I always say, take a little bit of time to enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. But we are going to taste this one now. So yeah, this is the Flugelbinder, a uh, 4.5% uh, Goza with uh, black currants, blueberries, strawberries, cherries and raspberries from Duck Pond Brewing up in Gothenburg. Slanja, Skoll, cheers. Yeah. This is really, really quite nice. Um, yeah. It's interesting. It's actually, um, it's got a little bit more potency. This is the thing with some of these beers. Some of these can be really interesting. I don't find this one quite as creamy as we did the last one. But the last one, if I remember rightly, was a kind of yellow fruity uh, sour beer. So this is kind of interesting, actually. But like I say, it goes together really nicely and it's definitely up there with the standards of the beer that I would expect from uh, Duck Pond Brewing. The one thing that comes into my head with this though, I do wonder with the levels of fruit that you have in this beer, this is one that might have worked a little bit better as like an imperial goza rather than uh, a single goza because there's a, there's a lot going on in this one and it is quite potent on the... Um, you know, it is quite potent on the the kind of sharpness when you take it in, but it, it, is, st it is still a very nice beer. I think this one might have been, uh, as an Imperial goes, this would have, this would work, have worked even better, but that's not to say it's not a good beer. It is. Like I say, with all the, with, when you've got five different fruit, fruit varieties in there, I think that pushes it a little bit for a lower ABV goes. I think, yeah, the Imperials, you can get away with that, but the lower ABV ones, maybe just like two or three, is a good sort of level. But yeah, it is nice this. And once again, it gets a thumbs up from me. But let's break this down and see how this goes together. Um, so yeah, middle third of the palate then. You can feel a little bit of that kind of bread crusty backbone there. Just a little bit. On top of that, you do get a little bit more of that kind of white bread. But then you get this whole yogurty type thing that I'm talking about, that, that I often talk about in these reviews. But as I say, the... Um, 
the malt base in this one is not madly thick. It really isn't. So yeah, fresh white bread, bread crust, the sort of white bread sitting on top of that toward the front, toward the front of that middle third of your palate. You start, uh, the, you start to get a little bit of the vanilla coming out of this one. But as I say, on top of the bread crusty layer, you have that nice... Um, on top of that, you can feel the, there's a little bit of wheat in there. So you can feel the wheat just kind of thickening out that white bready layer. Then on top of that, you get the oats. And the oats are giving you that nice kind of creamy character and as I say if you move down if you go down the middle line of your tongue the oats are the oats are quite smooth in that sense so yeah you get that nice kind of creamy oaty character coming out of the beer uh, but then as you move out toward the edges of that middle third of your palate they do you do get a little bit of dryness in there but yeah um as I say I really think this beer I think, you know, when you've got that much fruit in it, I do think it needs to be an Imperial Goza, this one, or to be a little bit thicker and creamier. That's that's the one thing about this. The flavour is good, but I think it just needs a little bit of a thicker mouthfeel. That's the thing that's coming into my mind with this beer. But that's not to say it's a bad beer at all. It definitely isn't. So, yeah, the, the thing you get in that middle third of the palate, too, is that the vanilla starts to come out of the beer a little bit later uh, on you can really feel that nice vanilla quality the further into the beer that you go if you go to the dead center of your palate you as i say you get that nice kind of smooth oaty note there but there's also a little bit of a kind of uh, there's also a little bit of um that kind of Werther's original butter candy butterscotchy sort of thing but yeah you do get that but other than that I don't think there's too much to say about the middle third of the palate in this one. Um, yeah, it's interesting. As I say, and this beer really does have quite a bit of a sharper, puckering kind of note to it. That's interesting. You're definitely getting more of the sharpness from the, the raspberries and the blueberries in this one than the aroma would have you believe. But yeah, let's focus on the... Um, yeah, let's focus on the... Uh, the the back third of the palate for a minute so yeah back third of the palate then you can feel there's a little touch of a bready build up there between middle and back third of the palate but then yeah the base you get a little bit more bread crust out of it you can feel that the sort of bready barley malt layer is a little bit taller it's more of a kind of airy white bready sort of thing and then on top of that you can feel a little bit of the thicker wheaty uh, character as well so you can feel that little there is a little touch of dryness to the wheat in there too which is, is kind of interesting and then on top of all of that yeah you get one or two little more yeasty esters like a very airy white bread with a wee touch of crackery woody sort of thing so yeah back third of the palate the flavor is definitely uh, the flavor is definitely taller uh, and then as you move into the middle third of the palate it just condenses down a little bit the thing as well is you'll notice that as the middle of your palate and the back third of your palate dry out you really get quite a bit of saltiness out of this beer which is one of the signatures of the Goza style. The Goza style should always be a little bit salty. Um, but yeah, let's move on to the kind of green side and the fruity sort of things then. So we'll do this. Yeah, so back corners of the palate. Um, as I say, this beer, I can tell from the kind of mouthfeel of this, it doesn't have, this doesn't have, um, hops added to it you can tell that but yeah i still get a little bit of a placebo very slightly earthy herbal sort of thing as you move toward the front kind of corners of the palate you start to get this almost sort of woody brambly kind of thing and then round the front curve of the tongue you do get little elements of grass but the thing you have to remember is that when you add fruit into a beer as an adjunct it's always going to suppress if you use hops and this is one of the arguments against using hops in these beers if you add fruit into the beer as an adjunct it, it suppresses that green component um, so yeah, um, this one for me, this is one of the more tart, sharper, and more salty gozes that I've had from uh, from Duck Pond Brewing. But it's it's very very nice, as I say. Um, as I say, I think it could just be a little bit thicker in its mouthfeel. But yeah, I think that's everything we need to say about the the kind of placebo green component that this beer has. 
Front third of your palate then on the fruity side of things. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palate, you get a little bit of bready build up there. Then the base of that, um, the base of that front third of your palate is definitely more kind of smooth and white bready. Then on top of that, yeah, you've got all these kind of sharper, fruity uh, notes to the beer. Um, yeah, so the fruits are kind of working out as I kind of thought they would earlier. So it's interesting, at the very back of that front third of your palate, there's the, the cherries. And the cherries actually do have quite a bit of sharpness to them, which is really interesting. But I think on top of that, you can feel... Uh, the strawberries are there in the back half of the front third of your palate and as you move further forward I think you get the back current so yeah the, the anchors of the beer you know sort of if we take the front third of your palate and think about it as a cup so you've got the cherries here then the strawberries sit just in front of it like that and then as you move into the front half of the front third of your palate it's the black currants and then sitting on top of that you've got sitting on top of all of that you've got the blueberries definitely and then you get the raspberries, I think, just sitting on that. And you can feel it's the raspberries. I feel it's the raspberries that kind of go around the edge of the tongue with a little bit of the blueberry. As I always say, you know, the, 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 the fruit spreads around the edge of your palate. So it's the blueberries and the raspberries, I think, that are spreading around the edge of your tongue in this one. So, yeah, cherries at the very back. Um, yeah, cherries at the very back of the tongue. Then the, the juicy or strawberry for sure. And I think the strawberry comes out more the further you go into the aftertaste. The black currants a little further forward. And then, yeah, the, the blueberries sit on top of that on the front half of the front third of your palate. Then the raspberries kind of go on top of everything, if you like. But the blueberries spread around the sides of your palate and so do the raspberries. Uh, and as I say, the further into the aftertaste you go with this beer, you get a bit more of the vanilla. You get a bit more of the strawberry. And there's also a wee bit more of the saltiness comes out of the beer. So yeah, the way that this beer goes together, I think, is um, is very, very nice. Um, yeah, it does get a big thumbs up for me. But like I say, I think this would have worked even better as like an imperial goza rather than just a single goza. Um, so yeah, on that note, I think we can round off this review with a wee look at the mouthfeel. So uh, mouthfeel-wise, this beer for me is definitely more, um, it's kind of, mid-bodied this one it's not the thickest of gozes that i've had from uh, from duck pond brewing that's definitely for sure um but it's quite smooth it has got a little bit of that creamy element to it but like i say i would want this beer just to be that little bit thicker the malt base is nice and smooth you've got the sweetness from the vanilla that mixes in with that and a little bit of the kind of butter candy sort of thing ibu wise i think technically speaking this beer is, is zero ibus but probably you're getting like five or something like that out of it it does have a wee bit of a placebo green component but then, yeah, you've also got that nice big kind of fruity uh, sour note to it. And like I say, this one actually has quite an impact to it. The raspberries and the blueberries really give you a bit of an impact when you take this beer. And you've also got that kind of saltiness that amplifies that, I would say, as well. Um, but yeah, the the way that this beer goes together is nice and it gets a big thumbs up from me. So um, yeah, I like it. Let's leave it at that for this one. I don't think we really need to say it any more about this beer so uh yeah this one was the flugelbinder a 4.5 percent goza with uh cherries raspberries blueberries black currants and uh what was the one what's the one i've missed uh black currants blueberries cherry strawberry and raspberry yeah and a little bit of vanilla i should say as well really interesting beer i've enjoyed this one like i say i think it could have worked better as an imperial sour this one rather than a, a regular uh sour beer or regular goza but still a very very nice beer so yeah big thumbs up to duck pond brewing once again as i said earlier this is one of the swedish breweries i would highly recommend that you check out but uh yeah once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from duck pond brewing as well and we will no doubt return to these guys at some point soon till the next time slange it skull cheers and I'll catch you guys later. Make sure you check out Duck Pond from Gothenburg.